One of the advantages of using PowerShell to manage Active Directory is that the difference between making updates to 50 or even 1,000 users is very little effort. I mean, it's very easy to update 50 users, and it's very easy to update 1,000 users because you have the power of PowerShell. So I wanted to go over some examples on how to do bulk updating. But before we get there, let's walk through the filtering component of the Active Directory module. So get 80 user, get 80 organizational unit, get 80 computer, get 80 object, they all have a filter parameter, and that is very powerful. And I want to show you why. So first, using an asterisk as the argument for the filter parameter returns all of that object. So for instance, if I'm using get 80 user, and the filter of an asterisk, this is going to return all of my users in Active Directory. So but I can filter by several different attributes on each user. So here as an example, I can look for all of my users that have a department equal to IT. Or look for users that have a title that ends with manager. So you can see here I'm using the like operator. And I can even filter for more than one attribute. So for example here, we can look for users that are in the IT department and have a manager of Jen. So there's three of those guys. Or I can look for users that were created before a certain date and after a certain date. So here I've got my before and after dates. And then for get 80 user, I've got my filter looking for created as greater than after, but less than before. See, I've got a whole host of users that were created between two and six days ago. And then of course we have the search base parameter and that allows us to look for users that are inside of a certain OU. So here's the OU that I'm using. And I also do need to specify a filter along with the search base. So here as an example, I'm using just the asterisk again. So this is all users that are in that OU. But I can use a more complicated filter. I can get as complicated as I want with that search base. So for example here, I can look in that OU and look for users that are enabled and their password has not expired. So it's all but one of the, the users from before. So that's cool. How do we use that to update users? We're not actually doing anything there. Well, once we've found the users to update, the rest of it's easy. Updating users is the easy part. So here's a couple of examples. If we need to update the user principal name on all of our users, we first need to find all the users that don't have the user principal name that we want. So here I'm filtering for all users that have a user principal name that is not like techsnips.io, does not end with techsnips.io. And you can see that I've got quite a few of them, as well as whoever uh, inputted those uh, user principal names, uh, put a period instead of an at symbol. So now that we've, we've figured out who we're going to be editing, editing them is, is just a simple matter of using set AD user. So here on line 73, you can see I'm using set AD user and using the dollar sign underscore to grab the variable out of the pipeline and setting the user principal name to be that user's SAM account name at techsnips.io. And in line 72 and 73 are a continuation here. You can see the back tick on line 72. So I'm actually piping get AD user to the for each object here and running that set AD user inside of it. So if we run this, we should now be able to run that same get AD user from before. So we're looking for users that have a user principal name not like that does not end in techsnips.io. So we now get no users. Excellent. So the other thing I want to mention here uh, is you can use a pipeline like we did there, or you can use a for each loop instead of the for each object. I prefer the for each loop because it's faster. And if you're working inside of the IFC like I am now, I think it's a little more readable, a little easier to use. So this is what I choose to do. But you can, of course, use the pipeline if that's what you prefer. Six one, half dozen the other. So, so another thing, if we wanted to reset the password expiration date for C levels, as an example, we can. So I've got my get80 user command here. I'm looking for filter users that are enabled and they're inside of the chief's OU, specifically looking at the password last set attribute. So you can see that we've got one user that matches our criteria. And the steps I've got for resetting the password expiration date is what I've got here. We've got to set the PWD last set to zero and then set that user with that value and then set it back to negative one and then apply it to active directory. And what that will do is reset the password expiration date to be right now. So we'll go ahead and run this. So now if we retrieve our users using the same command from before and looking at the password last set property, we can see that it is now set to 10.38 p.m., which is apparently right now. So another example I've got here is if we need to add users by titles into a group. So as an example, I've got this service desk group, and here are the members of that group. 
nobody. But what we need to do is we need to find all of our users that are have the service desk tech title and add them to that group. So I've got the get AD user here with the filter looking for the title equal to service desk tech. So if we run that little snippet of that, we should see that we've got two users. And on line 101, I'm using the add AD group member commandlet to add each of those users to that service desk group. So if we run the snippet, you can see on line 100, I have that right host to tell me what it's doing each time. Now that's a good idea to do even in production, just if you're sitting and watching it, then you can see what's happening. And then line 103 here, we can run that get AD group member commandlet again, and hopefully we'll see that we have members in that group. Indeed, those two users that it added. Excellent. So another more complicated example I've got here is I want to run through adding a user to a group based on their department. So in our fictional Active Directory environment, each user has a department that has a perfect name. And that name lines up to a group that is that same department name followed by department. So for example, if we had a user in the human resources department, you can see here line 107, user.department would equal human resources. And then that user would also be in a group called human resources department. So as an example, I had users in two departments. I got users in the IT department and users in the chiefs department. So if we look at the IT department group, there's nobody in it. And my chiefs department group, there's nobody in that either. So we need to figure out how to add those users into those groups based on their department. So the first thing we need to do is to figure out what groups a user is already in. So of course we can use the member of property. So as an example, we'll look at our Roy user and assign that to the user variable. And if we look at user.member of, you notice that we have the full distinguished name of that group. I would want to get just service desk out of there. And so we can use regular expressions here. This isn't a regular expression demonstration, so I'm not going to explain how this works. Uh, but if we run this line here, 115, it just outputs just the name of that group. So line 117, so if I'm looking at each user, um, so I'm using get AD user commandlet to filter for users that are enabled in our organizational unit, and then also returning the department and member of property. And then I'm looking at that member of property line 118 to see if they're a member of a group that is their department followed by the word department. And if they aren't, because I'm using the not contains instead of the contains, I'm going to add that user to that group on line 120, add AD group member, looking for that user's department. And then my member is, of course, the user.sam account name. Let's go ahead and run this. And so you can see that we've got the output down here. I had a write host in there. So we added each of these users to their respective groups. And so now, if I want line 124, I can look at the IT department group, and we can see that there are four individuals in there, just like we saw that output. And if we look at the Chiefs Department group, we can also see that, that there's one user in there, just like we expected. So that's how to get started doing some bulk updates to objects inside of Active Directory using my favorite tool, PowerShell.